thank you guys for showing up. Uh, I'm John Blanc, and welcome to Puzzler 101. <laughs> I didn't really know what to name it, but it's kind of just a basic of you know how we maintain and we're, what we do with the guzzlers and what they're for. So I thought that was a perfect name. You will not be graded in this class. So, <laughs> so icebreaker. What do you get when you cross a bighorn sheep with a mosquito? Bah humbug. <laughs> <laughs> What's more amazing than a talking antelope? A spelling bee. <laughs> the bighorn sheep and antelope are kind of a niche joke, so there's not a whole lot out there to find a joke on. So what is a guzzler? So guzzlers are just kind of water developments throughout our public lands that uh, are able to catch rainfall and we're also able to manually fill them up with water and then they are piped to a drinker system and they're able to give antelope and bighorn sheep water. The water program is used as a tool to mitigate the impacts of habitat fragmentation, drought, habitat loss, and human disturbance. So our pronghorn guzzlers, uh, also I will call them antelope they, it's a common name for them. You know, you'll hear them called American antelope, prong bucks, speed goat. That's probably my favorite. I'd love to bring that name back if we can, and I'd love to have a conversation with whoever saw a pronghorn and called it a speed goat. Um, prairie antelope or just antelope. On the Moab district, we have 29 pronghorn guzzlers. They're all different. They, some were built in the early 80s, and then some have been built in the past couple of years. So they're all very different and all the maintenance, different maintenance has changed the pipe systems and everything that comes with them. So here's kind of just our outline of where we have all of our uh, pronghorn guzzlers. You can kind of see like around I-70, kind of in that uh, Cisco Desert and San Arroyo, and then kind of in the, the hatch uh, rims area down south is kind of where we see them. We have most of our guzzlers. So kind of the common setup that we have is we'll have an apron up here. That's what catches all the rainfall. And then the rainfall goes into a gutter. And the gutter is piped to a sediment box right here. And the sediment box kind of, the you can see kind of the little holes in here. It kind of separates all the dirt that kind of comes with the, all the rainfall. And then we, the more clear water goes through. And then that is piped to a, a tank that's either buried in the ground or partially buried. And then once we turn them on, we have them piped and we'll have a, 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 a pipe to the drinker or we, have, we also have a blow off valve. So in the winter, they could sit for a couple months and then when we first turn them on, we'll turn on the blow off valve and just let all that dirty water come out. Yeah, and then it's piped to the drinker system that has a float valve. So the water will get to a certain level, the ball will stop, and the water will stop, and then when they drink it, it goes down, and then it goes up. So here's kind of the newer setup that we go with. It's uh, the partially buried tank. They're called boss tanks. They're 1,800 gallons, and then they, we also put an apron catch in it, and we get rid of some have sediment boxes, some don't. They're all different. And then one of kind of our cooler, more unique guzzlers, and instead of building a kind of a tin apron, we use the slick rock to collect the rainwater. And then where all that dirt is, the water goes down and is piped into a tank. So kind of how we document how the guzzlers are being used is some of it's fairly simple. We, you know, it, are there trails to the drinker? Is the ground stomped down around the drinker system? Are there pronghorn at the, you know, there when you, uh, when you show up. We also measure water levels. We'll check how much water is being used every couple weeks. Sometimes you'll see a two inch drop. Sometimes you'll see a 30 inch drop in water. And then sometimes after rainstorms, it's the opposite. You'll see a two inch rise or you'll see a, a 20 inch rise as well. And then also we like to put out game cameras just to see exactly how much use is uh, going on at each guzzler. So here's kind of just like a, a simplified uh, sheet of how we keep our water records. So it's got the guzzler and then the low, how much like the lowest point of water it had, the highest, and then if we had to fill it. 
and then what it, the level was at shutoff. So you can kind of see at the low levels, like some of them, you know, are July, mid-July. And was, this is from 2021. So you kind of see around here, like beginning of summer and then, you know, getting into the, the very hot days, they get used a lot. And then we, when we kind of see rain, we'll kind of see them go up. So that's kind of when you see in the fall, you'll see them up the levels will be a little bit higher. And then, so I highlighted this one at the bottom because that was one right before we had a giant rainstorm in July, it was empty. So the week I went out and it was empty, the next week we had that big rainstorm in July. And so I didn't go out that week because the, the roads get so tough to drive on. So the next week I went out with a water truck to put water in it and I measured it to see how much water it had collected throughout the storm and it collected 10 inches of water. So then when I filled up the rest with the water truck, I was able to get to 21 inches of water before it started kind of overflowing on this lip. That's about as high as the, the water goes. So I was able to figure out, so 1800 gallons divided by 21 inches of water is about 85.71 gallons or 86. So just from like a rainstorm, we get like over 850 gallons in those tanks. And that's really like, that's awesome. That can last over a year for the pronghorn antelope. So here's kind of a, a picture. I had a game camera actually at that guzzler when we had that big rainstorm. Can anyone spot the pronghorn? It's up here playing hide and seek. <laughs> and then here's a picture. It's kind of hard to tell, but this was the rainstorm that happened. And going through all the game cam photos, this became a stream going through and then around here like every picture you saw the ground looked different so really got hit hard and it's great because it fills up those tanks here's just some cool photos of uh just the game cams we put around i think every guy's been in this situation where they say something to a girl and she runs off <laughs> This one, I, I think it's a perfect photo of why we have the guzzlers. I mean, just nothing is around. It's just a desert and there's just, you know, our water source that we put out there. This photo down here, just something's going on over there, but she's staring right at the camera. <laughs> and then just this one just being used. It's, it's kind of cool to when we put the game cameras out there to actually see what's going on. Because when you're around, they know you're around. So it's nice to see how they react when no one's around. So we have 14 bighorn guzzlers, kind of just in like the Moab district, but then we also, I also share the maintenance with the, the Monticello area and they have around seven. The difference between the pronghorn and bighorn with location is a lot of our pronghorn ones are kind of off either main roads or kind of spur roads and they're easy to get to. I can access them with a water truck the difference between or with the bighorn sheep ones is that they're very isolated. They're, you know, three, four, five, six mile hikes to get to them. And a lot of them you'll, you'll walk down a wash and then you'll hike straight up a cliff <laughs> to get to it. So here's kind of just some of our locations. Uh, you can kind of see, it's kind of hard to tell on this map, but you know, they're right on these washes edge, right on the cliff edge. And then there's some in the book cliffs, the DWR takes care of. And then we have one just right north of the Colorado River, kind of the edge of arches. Uh, another kind of unique thing with the bighorn guzzlers is that instead of those drinkers that the pronghorn use, we, we make cement drinkers with them. And instead of that valve being on the drinker, we have a valve box that that is able to when this when uh, bighorn sheep are able to drink out of it this will fill up and go uh, go down and it's able to gravity feed it. and then once this gets to a certain level and this levels off they both stop also the tanks are a little different we can't just drop like a, a string and a, a a weight down the tanks to measure water so we kind of measure it more like I'll press down on this ball just to see how much pressure and if it's a lot of pressure that's good if it's not a lot of pressure that's bad oh also with uh, the uh, the drinkers big horns got big horns <laughs> and when they're you know taking a drink if they take a drink out of those drinkers they 
bang their heads a lot. At least that's what I like to believe. <laughs> Here's also just some other setups. This one's set up more just like our pronghorn ones where you have the, the metal apron to the sediment box and then a, a buried tank. And then uh, these are saucer guzzlers, not UFOs. You get some calls about those when people are scouring Google Earth that they saw a UFO in the middle of the desert. And it's, no, that's a guzzler. <laughs> And then also some of the terrain we have to build, uh, the aprons are built kind of farther away and then this one's piped to a saucer. Here's kind of just some of the Monticello ones. Yeah, you, know, you can tell like this one's a little bit older than this one. It's just what they have. And a lot of it comes down to also funding too. You know, do we have this amount of money to build this or do we have this amount of money to build, you know, something as big as that? Cool photos, just the bighorn sheep using it. The another thing with these bulls is that when they get low, you'll see the the bighorns uh, stomping at it to try to get more water out of them. And then also here's kind of the the bighorns that I'm talking about. I don't know, that would be kind of annoying trying to get water and you're just clunking your head every <laughs> every time. <laughs> also, bighorn sheep are very photogenic. I've noticed. I've never seen a bad photo of one. And it's always nice to see when you see big groups, kind of like the one on the left, just using it. And it gives you kind of a sense of accomplishment in a, in a way. So we also, I also do other things than uh, just guzzlers. We also had a uh, early winter, kind of late fall last year, we had a uh, fence project with Sitla. So has anybody been up Long Canyon before the Long Canyon Road? So when you go up it, it's all BLM, and then when you get to the very top, it tops out at Sitla. And so with uh, BLM, we have, not, we have not allowed camping for the past 20 years. And we'll be able to enforce it pretty good, but on the Sitla land with recreation, with more recreation in the area, it's getting harder and harder to enforce it. And with uh, uh, bighorn sheep habitat, we really don't want a lot of camping there. And with camping, we unfortunately get trash. People start cutting down a lot of the trees in the area, uh, human waste, and you know everything that comes with tourist camping. So to help the BLM protect these important habitats, we asked the SITLA to do a fence project to kind of uh, fence off a lot of uh, the bighorn sheep habitat to you know, make it more accessible for them. And it's nice to have cooperation like this just because animals don't know borders or lines or anything. So it's nice to have something that's very smoothed out and it's the same on both uh, agencies. So here's kind of just some photos of what we were dealing with on the Sitla land. You know, people cutting down trees, creating bathrooms and uh, rock holes, building uh, fire rings, and then you can also see kind of in the corner, like all the ash that's coming out of the, these fire rings. People are just throwing them off and not disposing of it. And then also just throwing it off the cliff and hoping someone else kind of takes care of it. Also, with a lot of the uh, illegal off-road use, you like kind of just tearing up the land over here. You can see just roads and roads and roads, and then just areas just being decimated, and then just trees holding on for dear life right there. So if you go up to Long Canyon now, these are kind of the signs you'll see. You'll see a, a sign just explaining the desert bighorn sheep, their story, and and the reasoning for the fencing. And then this is kind of, you'll see on the fence lines, there's no camping, desert bighorn sheep habitat, no campfires. Here's some of the main roads that we shut off and then some of the main camping areas that people stayed at. Try to keep people off. Here are just a couple signs you'll see around uh, BLM land is 
uh, a lot of the cliff areas and climbing areas, you'll see the desert bighorn sheep lambing grounds and uh, no climbing permitted from April 1st through August 15th. You'll see some signs that just kind of explain, you know, the importance of bighorn sheep and their habitat. I'll, you know, some bighorn sheep crossing, and then this is just that sign down here, but with a lamb crossing the road. So we're not making stuff up. <laughs> uh, also this year, we replaced a, a guzzler tank in June. So the old guzzler tank was just, it was an old just water tank. It didn't collect water. It had to be manually filled up every single, every single time it was empty and it was on Long Canyon. And for those who have been up and down that road, it is a rough road to get a water truck up and it's very slim and difficult. So, and it was only 550 gallons, which in hindsight, that's not a lot for the amount of use that a lot of these guys like to get. So we flew in a boss tank. A boss tank can hold 1,800 gallons capacity. And then also kind of just in this ring, like when it rains, that also collects water. So with the help of the Helitech crew, we were able to park the, the tank at the top and they were able to helicopter it down to the landing site and it was pretty cool to watch. I was going to put a video in, but at one point the pilot dropped the tank, so I didn't know if that was a good look on his part. <laughs> and I don't know if you'd uh, really enjoy his, his failure there. So after the tank was there, we were able to get the maintenance crew to help kind of just set it. It was kind of off, you can kind of see it's off kilter right here. That's as close as they could get, so we were able to move it. And then there's also a couple things to block this off. We put uh, wood. A lot of other agencies and areas, well, they'll, uh, they'll put those tanks in the ground, and then water will just fill up here. But we, with uh, there's a climbing area very close to that guzzler, and a lot of dogs were getting into it and just drinking the water and kind of pushing the bighorn out. So instead, we just piped down uh, down the cliff edge to a drinker that's kind of more hidden from dogs and people. So it's just kind of like how you can help just as, you know, the public and uh, a good person. It's just, we know Bighorn are sensitive to the presence of humans. Heat, drought, pregnant, stress, it's a common knowledge that 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 can be stressed out and you know when human activity is pred predictable they react a little bit less so as visitors respect and support seasonal restrictions or areas not permitted stay on designated roads and trails when utilizing remote areas give them space when you see bighorn move away they don't want to be pet they don't want to be touched <laughs> it's like the remember those uh the bison in Yellowstone a couple of years ago where everyone just wanted to go touch them and the bison would just whack them. <laughs> I don't think the bighorn would do that, but it'd be kind of not funny, but it'd be kind of a good experiment to see. <laughs> dogs on leash, please. Don't have your dogs chase them. They don't want to play. And also support future land management plans. I know I've probably said I a lot during this presentation, but it is definitely a group effort from many agencies and many people. The Bureau of Land Management, like it's more than just me at the BLM, like every, every division or every, you know, person. I, I probably went through every uh, age or uh, person there and asked a question and they're always happy to help me. So it's always been nice to you know, have all the help I can, because it is a lot of work to try to keep these on and just all, there's a lot more than just doing like on the ground, there's a lot of office work that needs to be done. It's really great to have all the people that we have. Uh, the MPS, we're lucky to have uh, one of, if not the best bighorn sheep guy in Moab area that works for the MPS. He goes all around the West to uh, help other offices Whenever I need a question answered, I'll email him or call him, and he's always very helpful. The Utah Division of Wildlife Resources there, they kind of go hand-in-hand hand partner. They help us out a lot. 
if they're in the area and they have water, they'll be like, hey, can we go fill up a guzzler or something like that? Or hey, uh, if any work needs to be done, they're always able to help. Uh, the Wild Sheep Foundation, they, oh, same thing, you know, ready to help. They, we actually have a couple of projects hopefully planned for next year to be able to get some aprons on some of our guzzlers that don't have aprons. Dedicated Hunters Program, uh, for anyone that doesn't know, it's more, um, if you kind of volunteer for a couple hours, you kind of get a cheaper uh, hunting permit. So we get a lot of those too, filling up guzzlers. And then also just volunteers. We get a lot of people that, you know, they're not hunters, they don't work for an agency, but they just want to help out some way. So plans for the future. We don't really have like any plans to build more guzzlers, new guzzlers, just more kind of maintain and improve what we have. Like uh, I said, a lot of our guzzlers are, were built in the 1980s. You know, tanks go bad, aprons break down, wood breaks. So there's a lot of just kind of just maintaining, keeping them online, keeping the critters happy. And also, we also improve habitat. We do a lot of fencing um, to kind of uh, close off their habitat and then also we change a lot of the uh, barbed wire fences will change the smooth wire at the bottom because pronghorn go under the fence they don't go over so that's kind of we try to do that a lot so they can get around educate that's i'm not a great public speaker by any means but i like to educate people and i don't know when i first moved here i didn't know what a guzzler was and i don't know if anyone else really knew it's it's kind of one of those things being from the northwest we had water I never thought about, you know, like places that didn't have like a plethora of water. Like I, I came from a town that was named Walla Walla, which translate to many waters. <laughs> so kind of going from there to a, a desert. We get a lot of other visitors to our guzzlers. I know it sounds bighorn pronghorn guzzlers, but we do let other animals use the guzzlers. Uh, badgers are very popular at our guzzlers. If you have never seen a badger in the desert, then you're not looking hard enough <laughs> because they are everywhere. And they like to build nests under our aprons. And if I'm working under our apron and I hear a growl, I get the heck out of there. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, they like to drink the water and there's something about them. I think they're so cute too. So yeah, I think every guzzler, I think we on average have at least one badger sighting. Kit foxes, or I thought this was the chupacabra. I thought I finally had uh, documented evidence of the great beast. <laughs> but they're pretty funny when they get on camera. I don't know if the game cams give like a little sound when they take a picture, but every time a picture gets taken, the next picture is a blur from a kit fox. <laughs> They're pretty silly. They kind of remind me of cats too. They do a lot. They'll see them kind of do this, pounce around and stuff, and they jump up on top of the, the drinkers. Prairie dogs. <laughs> Prairie dogs always get right up to the camera, and I can't tell if they like their photo taken or if they're grumpy that I'm here. <laughs> and then tourists. There's a lot of them. They're everywhere now, and they're getting to our guzzlers. <laughs> I don't believe this was a group of tourists. I think these are volunteers, but I thought it was a good example to show because I've been running into tourists at some of our guzzlers asking questions. Thank you, guys. And if you have any questions, I'll answer them. <laughs>